Hello and welcome back to Practical Knife Reviews. Today we're going to be taking a look at an Imperial Electrician's Knife. So an Electrician's Knife, uh, otherwise known as a TL29 Electrician's Knife, is probably one of the more popular traditional knives that you can find in terms of pocket knives. There was just a ton of this style of knife made by a bunch of different companies floating out there. So. What makes an electrician's knife an electrician's knife? Well, traditionally, it would have a spear point blade, and we can see here the tang stamp, Imperial Prov RI USA. This tang stamp denotes that the knife was made between 1956 and 1988. And then the thing that really makes it an electrician's knife is the secondary here, which is a wire stripper, paint, a uh, uh, wire stripper scraper, and the end here is a flathead screwdriver. Now this is, like I said, from 56 to 88. You can see there's a little cutout here in this. I don't know whether or not that was originally in there to act as a, basically a finger choil on the blade, or if it was put in afterwards, uh, but it looks really smooth. So my assumption is that it was in there originally. This is a slip joint knife except that the secondary has, you can see here, a little liner lock. Now, one thing to keep in mind with this liner lock, it's not a tight liner lock like we see on, on modern knives. You can see here there's that much vertical blade play, but no horizontal blade play to speak of, at least on that one. And on the spear point blade, a little bit of, little bit of wobble in the blade itself because it's a relatively soft blade, but no play at the pivot. Both of these have half stops, and uh, yeah, all of the liners and everything are quite tight, which is really nice considering this is an Imperial, which was a really basically budget brand. Now it says Gould on the front. What's Gould? Gould was an electronics and battery manufacturer, superconductor company. They were founded in 1928 in the United States. Eventually, they moved their headquarters to Germany and recently went out of business. 2014 was actually when they went bankrupt and, and the company ceased to exist. But as I said, this specific knife, so this would have been a promotional knife for Gould made by Imperial between 56 and 88. So let's get some measurements on the knife now. First, we're gonna take length measurements. Here we've got three and three quarters inches closed. Let's open the spear point blade, open. The length is about six and a half or so. Uh, let's move the bail out of the way, that way I can actually get it flush with the ruler. Uh, yeah, six and a half. Uh, the blade has a cutting length of two and a half inches, overall length of just uh, about two and, let's say two and five eighths. It's a little bit over uh, with the kick here. So uh, I mentioned quickly that there is a bale that's to put a lanyard through and to hold on you. Let's get some weight information now. Bring in the scale. And fire that up. And we're on. We're looking at 82 grams or 2.9 ounces. So as you can see, it's quite a light knife, uh, especially for having two tools on it, a blade and a, a scraper slash screwdriver. Let's see how it cuts. First, we're gonna bring in some paper. We'll test the spear point blade. Let's see that I can get this in the frame. Uh, in the frame, yeah. So you can see it's quite sharp. Uh, I sharpened it recently. Let's also take a look at the scraper. So the scraper doesn't have to be as sharp as a blade. It's just for stripping wires and, and scraping paint and whatnot, but um, you can actually sharpen it. Oops, helps if I get it started. You can sharpen it. I have it moderately sharp, you can see. It's a little bit of a hairy edge, but yeah. Plenty sharp for a scraper. And like I said, the end here is an unsharpened screwdriver. 
Let's take a quick look at how it does on cardboard. Something that we would be cutting through quite frequently in our day-to-day -day lives. Let's get this in frame here. And now well, you can see it's going through it. And you can't tell how little resistance I'm putting in here, but there's almost no resistance at all. That's because the edge is screaming sharp and you can see how thin that blade is behind the edge. I mean, it's it's super thin. So now, before we go out and test this outside, uh, what do you think of this knife? What do you think of the electrician's knife style in general and then this knife in particular? Well, from the color standpoint, I mean, it's not an extremely aesthetically pleasing color. And there's not a lot special to this spear point. Uh, but I really do like the wire stripper screwdriver blade. I think it's unique and, you know, just when I was holding it, I thought it was really a functional, functional blade and really neat with the screwdriver. Sure, and this being built for electricians, uh, having a hyper-functional but not necessarily aesthetically pleasing would be a uh, knife, that is, an aesthetically pleasing knife, would be right up their alley. I mean, if you're stripping wires and stripping paint and, and all of that stuff that you would do as an electrician, you're not looking for a heirloom piece that's going to last forever. You're going to be blasting through blades left and right because you're uh, abrading the blades on, on wires and whatnot pretty frequently. So something that works, has uh, tools that you would be using in your day-to-day -day job. And I should mention the pull on the spear point blade was about a five. This is about a six. Um, having a tool that just gets the job done, and you can see there's a little cutout here. Um, that would be for if you want to be using that uh, while you're screwing in things, or if you just need a little bit of extra leverage while you're stripping wires. So my, it's worth a mention. Um, but yeah, having a hyper-functional tool um, that's not pretty but gets the job done is, is something that would be absolutely fine. And these knives, they sold for just a couple of dollars. So something that you could get, uh, use it hard in your work. If it breaks, you replace it. Hardly cost anything. So... Uh, you like it then, in other words. Oh, yeah, I think uh, I really like the one blade. This one. Yep. All right, so we're going to go take it around now and do some uh, actual testing on it and see how it performs. So see you in a sec. So now we're going to take a quick look at how the uh, Imperial 56 to 88, 1956 to 1988, that is, uh, electrician's knife does for some other light tasks outside. So we're going to check it on peeling an apple, which you would expect us to do very well on, considering it's sharp and thin. And then we're going to do some light stuff on wood, because even though this isn't necessarily intended for wood, you could be doing stuff as an electrician based on wood, uh, or if you happen to go camping after a day of work uh, as an electrician, you might just have this with, and, and we'll, we'll see how it works. That's kind of the whole point of the channel, is we're reviewing knives that otherwise uh, people wouldn't have necessarily reviewed. I mean, how many people are looking at an old uh, TL-29, a promotional Imperial electrician's knife. So first we're going to check on an apple with the disclaimer, as always, that I am not the best apple peeler because the only time I ever peel apples is for this channel. I, I like to eat the peel. But as a uh, more or less expected, with that super thin blade and the fact that it's really sharp at the moment because I, I just sharpened it, um, we're getting right under the skin and you can see how, how, look how, you can see the blade through the skin. That's how close we're getting underneath. We're able to just get right under that skin and really peel it fine. Not that you necessarily need to, but it's nice to know that you can do these really, really shallow cuts if you need to. And again, keeping in mind that, uh, I am definitely not definitely not an expert at this but I think you get the idea we're not gonna do the whole thing because I'm just gonna eat it anyway and like I said I like uh, like the peel so I'll sit back down now we're gonna take a quick look that's for the chipmunks hey a quick look at how we do on wood so we're just gonna do some feather sticking this is pine pines very soft wood so we would expect this to go pretty well and the handle yeah nothing fancy as mom said earlier but 
it's it's really comfortable in the hand i must say one of the more comfortable ones that we have but this wood is also a little bit waterlogged at the moment which always does play a factor into feather sticking but yeah we can see the feathers aren't coming out great at the moment but you're definitely able to do it uh, I think that the thinness of the blade is actually hurting us in this case. It's not pushing the wood outwards. Let's try a different face just for the sake of testing. Yeah, we can see it, it cuts under the wood really quickly. Like, uh, I get under the wood right away, but the blade is so thin that we're not really able to kind of get between the layers and, and push the layers apart. I'm having to like slice through every individual piece of wood fiber. And this blade is quite flexible. Um, the heat treat on here is obviously not for hardness and edge retention. The heat treat on here is for just strength because uh, if you're an electrician, you might be doing some things that let's just say are not very nice for the blade. So, I mean, look at how, how much that blade flexes and that's hardly with any force at all. So that does complicate feather sticking a bit. Now let's check red oak. As always, this is about the hardest wood we've got in our forest here. So we'll see how this does. And again, I get I, the cut starts well. I, I mean, you probably can't tell, but when I first push, it starts okay, but it just does not have the width to really get under there and wedge the layers apart. So, can you make feathers? Yeah, I mean, you can see I'm making some feather sticks here. But, I mean, the quality of them is, is really not that great. And again, it, it's partly due to how thin the blade is, um, which is a double-edged sword. It helps get in, but it doesn't really help with, with pushing those away. And again, this blade is so flexible that as soon as you try to put force, the blade bends out of the way. So, let's take a quick look at one last thing that I just thought of. I'll be back in one second. So, I don't have any wires to strip. But, just to give an idea of how the scraper would work for something, I just cut these branches off of it. This is an invasive. This is buckthorn. Uh, and I chop down the invasives when I, when I can, try to keep the forest healthy. Let's just see how it does it debarking. Yeah, you know. Again, this is not the intended purpose of this blade. This is the strip wires and just scrape paint or whatever. So again, this is not gonna be made to hold an edge particularly well, but it's really thin. It gets under the bark, okay? It's not really gonna necessarily inform you on its intended purpose of stripping wires, but well, maybe if you're an electrician and you do a lot of wire stripping, seeing this will give you some idea of how it's going to cut on a wire. I don't know, that's up to you. I just provide the information and, and you make your own decisions. So then the last thing that we're gonna do, we're gonna go in and we're gonna test the screwdriver out on a screw. Uh, and once we do that, then we're gonna have mom give you her opinion on this knife. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. Final test for the Imperial Electrician's Knife, TL29 style electrician's knife with the Gould promotional uh, name on it. We're just gonna check how this uh, flathead screwdriver on the end of the scraper wire stripper does. So you can see here, we've got a, a loose knob on this drawer. So we're gonna open this up and we're just going to screw this in and see how that goes. So I'm holding the knob on the backside and well, there you go. It slipped out a little bit at the end, but yeah, that knob is completely solid now. There's no movement, nothing. So. In terms of flathead screwdrivers, as long as they're not super small flathead screwdrivers, as well as these, this is a, actually a Phillips head cutout here, but you know, it's got that long cut right there. As long as it's wide enough where this will be accepted by the, the screwdriver's head, this actually works quite well. And with the liner lock on there, you don't have to worry about it closing. Again, there's that little bit of vertical play but you don't have to actually worry about it closing on your fingers if you're trying to torque it too hard and then it, it wants to close. It's not going to happen. You've got this little liner lock here. So overall impressions, Ma, of the Imperial 
I'm calling it the TL29. That's just the common name for electrician's knives. This TL29 uh, knife. How do you think it did? Uh, what do you like about it versus not like about it? Overall impressions. Spear point blade is so-so. Uh, I think there's nothing special with it. It's the other blade, the wire stripper, screwdriver. I really like that blade. Yeah, and I, I do too. Again, this would have been like an incredibly cheap knife. You can still get them on the internet for super, super cheap because there were so many of them made. Um, also should ma mention that this is just cheap plastic handles. I mean, this is really made for economy. The one thing I don't like about it, um, other than just, yeah, aesthetically, it's not very nice. These are just shell handles. They're, they're kind of crimped down on the top and on the bottom to hold the scales on. The main thing I don't like about it, and I can see the reason why they would do it, but I really just don't like it, is how soft the spear point blade is. Are you picking up how much wobble there is in that oh, blade? Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm not pushing very hard, and look at how much flex there is in that blade. It's almost like a fillet blade. What that's going to mean, for I mean, so it's going to be tough. You're not going to be able to snap this blade very easy. Is the other blade is flexible? No. It's not. That's why I'm liking the other blade. Yeah, you see this one, there's a little bit of flex in it, but not nearly as much. It's also a little bit thicker. Mm -hmm. But there's a little bit of flex in this, which again, you want with the screwdriver because if it was super hard and you tried to twist it, you could just snap the top of it right off. Now with this blade, with it being soft, I mean, super, super soft. I, I, har I don't think I have a blade other than a fillet knife that's that soft. Um, with it being so soft, you're not going to snap the tip of this off if you're jamming it in a wall and, you know, bending it. You're going to bend it, but it's not going to snap unless you're doing something incredibly dumb with it, like locking it in a vise and t really torquing on it, which who, who would do that? Why would you do that? But what that means is that for actually like if you're trying to cut against the face of something, look at that bend. You see that bend there? Yeah. If you're pushing against something, your blade is no longer straight, which means that your cut is no longer going to be exactly what you were trying. Uh, and also, with it being so soft, you can have this razor sharp, like we did, and light, light tasks, like cutting through wood, are going to slightly dull the blade. Whereas, if the blade was actually hard, you wouldn't have that kind of dulling. The wearing of this blade is going to be really fast because of how soft it is. So that's really the big complaint I have about it. And again, I understand it's an electrician's knife. You have to do a lot of hard tasks with it. You don't want it to break while you're working, but seriously, it's like a fillet knife. I understand the need for having a tough tool rather than a tool that's going to hold an edge forever. But I don't know, for me, that's just a bit excessive and it compromises the ability of this blade to do other tasks other than just be ultimately supremely tough. So that's that's the thing that I think is the biggest drawback on this knife by far. Other than that, I, I do like these electrician's knives, but any other thing that you want to add, Ma? No, I think we covered it well. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in uh, to Practical Knife Reviews. We'll catch you next time. Uh, thanks for watching. Up this segment for just a few days until the cat leaves the house but we want to see how the cat likes the knife okay rat what do you think of what do you think of the electrician's knife oh she likes it oh yeah she likes it that's nice well there you have it the cat likes the electrician's knife